From 1993 to 2009, European police forces sought the Phantom of Heilbronn. This one was linked with over 40 crime scenes in Germany, Austria and France, including murders, burglaries and drug cases. What were the repercussions when she was eventually found? I'll give you that one more time. From 1993 to 2009, European police forces sought the Phantom of Heilbronn. This woman was linked with over 40 crime scenes in Germany, Austria and France, including murders, burglaries and drug cases. What were the repercussions when she was eventually found? By the way, it is really difficult to say murders and burglaries. It's just, there's a lot of, <laughs> lot of syllables there. It'd be harder with a Scottish accent, but it's pretty difficult with an English one. So you're saying repercussions when someone who's, a, when a criminal has been caught, is this repercussions to the criminal, to society, to the police force? This question, as they all are, is very carefully phrased. And mm -hmm. I would say, what were the repercussions when she was eventually found? No more crimes were committed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that like the two obvious answers, which don't make sense mm -hmm. for the show, would be that she was prosecuted as a criminal yeah. and that the crime spree stopped. But I don't yeah. think that those are the answers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give you any more hints, but your instincts are doing pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Did, did, did people like started making the same crimes because they're like oh that's cool and then they learn from this i don't know like is that's a repercussion like, like a copycat killer wow that would be awful oh like <laughs> is that how like a true crime comedy podcast came about is that a repercussion now we have we're flooded with true crime podcasts <laughs> wait you brief you briefly said you briefly said true crime comedy podcast is that a thing are yes. people doing like stand-up routines about serial killers because honestly Absolutely. i wouldn't put that past some podcasters you need to listen to my favorite murder it's a true crime comedy podcast okay sure <laughs> um, wow <laughs> yeah yeah there's another one called and that's why we drink i'll just leave it at that yeah great podcast <laughs> i'm not sure how i'd feel if I was somehow caught up in one of these crimes and there were people making jokes. I'm, okay, I'm not going to get morally outraged here. That's that's not the show. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, that's where I'm like, is it like a pop culture situation where like people are copying it or now there's a bunch of like podcasts or TV shows? Like I'm, I'm like, oh, is it is it going towards that direction? Well, there's something else interesting happening here where you're having to collaborate across multiple governments and jurisdictions. So I'm wondering if there was a new uh, a new sort of way of managing crime across multiple countries yeah. or districts or uh did, did we get a new a new a new agency? Was the Interpol created? Interpol? No, not in this case. You mentioned okay. she was called the Ghost of Heilbronn. Are there a set of ghost stories that came out named after her? like folklore around it it's phantom not ghost oh okay and i'm not sure if that makes too much i'm not enough of an expert in the supernatural to know if that if that makes a difference but <laughs> i think um, they're the same i'm thinking the translation to spanish <laughs> we were both saying phantasma yeah, yeah, for yeah. both <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah are any of our guesses police force jurisdiction laws folklore any of these on the right track or are they all incorrect repercussions Nope. Okay. All <laughs> completely wrong. Like this I is. I definitely need a clue then. <laughs> yeah. Give us yeah. a bone. <laughs> I mean, it is a little bit unusual for a woman to be linked to this many cases across this many countries. Jeremy, you said something at the start, which is that uh, the obvious repercussions would be that she was arrested and the crime stopped. And I'll tell you, neither of those things happened. Was she dead? Okay. Did she die at the crime of uh, at the scene of one of her crimes? Mm, I wonder. Is, does this have something to do with like sexism and her being a woman? No. In fact, most of the people arrested for murders and burglary and drug crimes are going to be men. So it is unusual for a woman to be uh, linked with forty different crime scenes. Is it that she um, worked as part of the in some investigation team? She was leaving DNA at all the scenes and somehow got implicated in all the cases? You are very, very close. The next clue was going to be the years. 
1993 is when you started getting regular DNA evidence checking. So yes, you're missing a key part here. Wait, she didn't do any... Wait, wait, so was she was she innocent? Wait, so she didn't do any crimes? Yeah, she's innocent. What were the repercussions when she was eventually found? It's a very carefully phrased question. Oh, oh, wait, what's the last year, 1993 to when? Uh, t 2009. Was this like when they stopped using some science, sci like pseudoscience, as 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 no evidence no, anymore? You, no, you nearly got it, Jeremy. Ugh. It's the same woman's DNA across forty different crime scenes. You, you're mm -hmm. nearly there. What might cause that? She's not part of the investigation, and she's not the criminal. Okay, sorry, Jeremy. What, did, what were we saying? We're so stuck in. I'm so stuck in my head. I didn't hear you. So sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Well, I said that at uh, first. I said. Um, that maybe she was a part of the investigation team, and that would explain how her DNA says she left hair or something at all the different crime scenes. He's saying that she wasn't at all the crime scenes, so either her DNA was somehow transplanted to all these crime scenes by someone else, or somehow there was a mistake in the identification of her DNA. I think I heard this story, isn't it? Because she was the one doing the DNA tests, and all of the DNA tests were like contaminated by her. You're really close. If she worked at the lab, um, then that would give her, but that would still make her sort of part of the investigation team. But if she worked at the lab and she was contaminating her own samples as she tested them, then she would be, she would implicate herself. But I feel like they would, they would check that beforehand. Like you would just get a sample of anyone who worked in the lab and you would immediately know if something like that was happening. Are there repercussions gloves were used when performing DNA PCR tests? You're all, you're all so close. I, I think I'm going to give it to you. It's not one of the investigators. It's one of the workers in the factory that made DNA swabs. Oh my God, was oh. she just like cleaning? Was she the whole <laughs> yeah. person no. cleaning? One of the workers okay. in the manufacturing yeah. plant did something that contaminated a few batches of these over years. So 40 different swabs over all those years, eventually came up with her DNA on them. So the repercussions after all that were that they improved the production and the packaging of DNA swabs so it wouldn't happen again. Okay, so there was yeah. no crime spree after all. There was no crime spree. It was 40 completely unconnected cases with just this one woman's DNA found at all of them. So this just shows how much I don't know about like science and like, you know, <laughs> DNA and but I only listen to true crime comedy podcasts. That's all. <laughs> <laughs>